ground has fallen ill. The evening chapel sits silently in the evening chill. The forested hillock petrified, forever statue still. Naked time-blacked timber stands where time's indifferent hands have shorn. Empty windows like sightless eyes overseeing the blasted lowlands. The deathless steeple sinks into the soil whence it was born. Like a great beast's ribs, fractured and frayed, the pews all splintered, wood decayed, the altar's silver trim is grayed, this holy house a warden against an accursed and restless grave. Behind the church's corpse, a tree stands bare and stands there solitary, and yet beyond there lies a clearing. Through the woods, a maiden can be heard keening. Through the clearing runs a pass, a wrought iron gate there does decry the potter's field where sleepless, eternal, eyeless terrors lie. A visceral sky beset with wine red clouds that bruise into a purplish pink. Apollo retires, the sending sable the world surrounds, the waning sun below horizon sinks. Here we meet, see them at a glance. These two young lovers abreast, and how they dance, venturing unto an evening stroll, but far from home, seeking, well, of course, what all young people seek, to be alone. Giggling through the chapel, these young lovers pass, this strapping lad and charming lass. Before the Gothic gate they stand, they venture in, clasping hand in hand. Past the stillness, through the gate, farther into the twilight field, the gate behind them closes shut, latch and key, locked and sealed. The lass recites, and the lad he does confess, and how they sing, embrace, kiss and caress. A midden sea of, of headstones is their only pall, sprawled upon a gentle grassy can. A baleful full moonrise, hypnotized by each other's eyes and cradled in each other's arms. With their muffled moans, they sigh and sing, so that they cannot see the things. Gangrenous race, wastrel arms are breached from quiet, from quiet earth, and seas defile and wrench the lovers into their deathless curse. Warlock souls, for centuries deceased, hear their cries, they cry, crying out for living hearts on which to feast. <laughs> Clawed and hounded, these hardly more than children, torn and ripped, rent asunder, their blood drank up by fleshless jaws and spirits kept as horrific plunder. The moon is wane and slowly descends, but for the lovers the night shall never end. Their cries now ghastly howls, you can hear them still, upon this plot, upon a hill, where hallowed ground has fallen ill. Let's together again, please, for Jonathan.